Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Greetings, everyone. My name is Father Mark McGuckin. I'm a priest of the Vancouver Archdiocese in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And we're shooting this in our parish here, St. Mary's in Chilliwack. And it is my absolute joy to wish you and your families very blessed Advent season and Merry Christmas. And I want to focus today on the theme, the master theme of Christmas is, is Christ being the light, the light of the world. And as we talk about this, I'm going to start with the great Advent and Christmas figure, St. John the Baptist. The saint is very dear to my heart. He's my confirmation saint. And um, I was actually baptized on the nativity of St. John the Baptist, June 24th. And so over the years, I've um, I developed more and more of a, a deeper relationship with St. John. And, and I think it's just a, a perfect entryway to Jesus. Uh, when, we, when we look at Christ, our light. And so I'll start with reading uh, a passage from uh, the first chapter of John's Gospel, the famous first chapter, uh, and we, what is featured here, the Word of God, the Word who became flesh, and John, the voice crying out in the wilderness. So we pick it up here, um, the first chapter, verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He, John, he was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. And so we have here this deep uh, theological reality of Christ, the incarnation, the light of the world coming in. And the ultimate opening act, St. John, the wild man out by the Jordan River, eating locusts and wild honey, you know, not the most gourmet food that comes to mind when I think of, you know, living a living any kind of comfortable life, but a radical life of asceticism. What was nourishing John mainly was his relationship with the Blessed Trinity. A man, we know, the cousin of Jesus, son of Elizabeth and Zachariah, out on the Jordan, luring all these people out, not to the temple, but to the Jordan River, to hear this prophet, this man speaking truth, bold words of repentance, and paving a way for the Lamb of God to enter the world. And St. John, yeah, we pic picture him on the banks of the Jordan, you know, inviting people to prepare, prepare through repentance and this baptism, the washing, the cleansing of baptism. And see, John, we know, is this wild figure, this wild man, fiercely in love with God, fiercely a defender of the truth, and wanting the good for the people. And he's the one that says, I must now decrease so the Lord may increase. And we can picture that move of a spotlight being on John for a while and then humbly saying, okay, our Lord's coming. Direct your focus onto Jesus. And now we look here at the Advent season the season of waiting, the season of preparation, and then the coming of our Lord at Christmas. When I was growing up in Maple Ridge, British Columbia, oh man, the Christmas was, of course, for everyone, just a delightful season. You know, you got the presents, you got the family, you got all these activities, Christmas show, shows and, and Christmas carols, and everything that bombards us in the world, 
what we got to buy, what we, you know, the, all this, these anticipations to have a, to have a real worthwhile Christmas. And for me, for many years, you know, Christmas, really thinking about it, was about one person, me, <laughs> me, my Christmas morning, my Christmas experience. And I remember one Christmas, I think I was 12 or 13 years old, and there was uh, a big video game release that year, Christmas time. This was back in the day of the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and no, I'm not promoting <laughs> Nintendo, and I'm not bashing video games at all, but I happened to be, just at that time, just obsessed with particular video games. I like playing with my friends. And picture this, Christmas is approaching, you know, people are shopping until they drop in the stores, and the big video game release of the season was this quite violent video game, called Mortal Kombat. Many of you might have played this game, known friends who have played the game or watched the movie or whatever. And Mortal Kombat Part 2 was coming out, it was going to be released. And myself and my friends were really fans of the first Mortal Kombat, and we couldn't wait to get our hands on this and to play it and just to talk how action-packed it was. And so Christmas, picture this, me, as a 12 or 13 year old boy, I, I just couldn't wait till Christmas morning to, to unwrap, you know, a cartridge, a Nintendo cartridge, to see that it's Mortal Kombat Part 2, and to put it in that system, and to play it. And so I remember going to church Christmas morning, my dad and my sister, and we're at Mass, and picture me as a young boy, a lot more hair than I have now, and I was eagerly waiting for this Mass to be over. Why? Well, because I wanted to get back home. I wanted to play this video game. You know, because that what, what, what was Christmas for that year, that's what it was all about. Me. The spotlight just shining on me. And getting back home, racing downstairs, popping it in and playing hours. Okay, I'll be up for dinner, Christmas dinner, but that Christmas wasn't about Jesus. It was, it was about the light emanating, emanating from our television set, playing this video game, <laughs> this, the, this gruesome video game. And afterwards, it took many years afterwards to think and reflect and say, wow, man, I wish I could have done I practiced that Christmas a little differently because it was ultimately empty. My focus was on, not on Jesus. And for me, it was emblematic of my life growing up. It was a lot about me, myself, and I putting the spotlight on me, not on others or Christ. Yeah, the prayer life was there, going to Mass, but kind of going through the motions. For me, the, the light was on me, and I felt over time just the emptiness, the longing for something more. And, you know, when I started to cultivate that relationship with St. John the Baptist, man, what an inspiration. You know, a bold figure, a lot of gifts, a lot of skills in, in just drawing people in, speaking to their hearts, captivating them. But that humility, that humility to say this life, this journey is not all about me. And I can influence your life, but not as much as our blessed Lord, the light of the world who's coming. And so you have that stepping out of the spotlight, St. John the Baptist, and then focusing the people's attention to our blessed Lord Jesus. I love this. This, this is the move for every Christian, you know? Yeah, we have a role. Yes, we can savor the goodness of life. That's so important, especially around Christmas time, what that means for us, our interconnection as brothers and sisters in Christ. But the focus on Jesus, to, re to direct people's attention to our blessed Lord, man, it's so important because it's our Lord who nourishes. It's his sustaining grace that helps us on this pilgrim journey. 
And we look at that deep mystery of the incarnation as highlighted at, at, at Christmas, the Word becoming flesh, taking on flesh. And sometimes it can be a bit abstract. I mean, what does that mean in my concrete existence, in my walk in this pilgrim journey? The bumpy road of life sometimes. I like focusing on this. You know, the big mystery of the Incarnation, we have the Son of God, the Word made flesh, coming right down to our level. Into the, let's say, let's call it the swamp of humanity. The brokenness, the woundedness, the heartache, the longing for a Savior, the longing to experience life in the fullest. And here's Jesus coming right down, being with humanity, offering himself fully for humanity. And then there's this move of elevation. In the incarnation, in the mystery, there's the descent, and then there is the elevation. And we can, oh man, we can personalize this wherever we are. Whatever challenges that we face day in and day out, whatever heartaches, whatever difficult memories that come up from time to time, whatever it may be, we say, Lord, be with me. What does our Lord do? Does he hesitate? No. He comes right down to our level. He's deeply interested in us, whether it be in Advent, Christmas, or whenever. Our Lord, the light of the world, he's deeply interested in us. So to cultivate those prayers of invitation, reliance, reliance on our Lord, to say, Lord, hey, this is what I'm going through right now. Lord Jesus, I give you access. Lord Jesus, King of Kings, I give you full dominion of my heart and every chamber in my heart. Even those chambers that sometimes we like to call our own sovereign territory. No, Lord, let's break down the walls. Let's enter in. Lord Jesus, shine that light, that grace. Walk with me. And as he, as he does all the time, he lights the way. You know, our Lord, he, he challenges us to seek, to ask, to knock. Seek and you will find. Ask and the answer will give, be given to you. Knock and the door will be open for you. And so it, we're offered this challenge to knock, to seek, to ask. And our Lord, he comes right down to our level. You know, with the intercession of St. John the Baptist, our Blessed Mother, all the saints who are at our, at our side, drawing us closer to our blessed Lord, you know, and no matter what, whatever we find ourselves in, whatever, even if it's a dramatic downward spiral that we found ourselves, sins we've committed, or the circumstances of life just falling on our lap, that, you know, we could be, our heads could be spinning, not knowing where to go. Or our Lord is saying, hey, lift your hearts and minds heavenward. Invite me in. Allow me to be me during Christmas and Advent and beyond. And so here it is, our Lord coming into our lives again. We have that refreshed sense at Christmas that Christ the Word, the Word made flesh, is with us. He carries us. Ah, oh, what a truth to savor. That we're, the, the fact that we're beloved daughters and sons of the Father, living in Christ, that's how we have life. With the, spotlight, with the spotlight on our blessed Lord, man, that's the way to full human flourishing. And we come again here, the first chapter of uh, the Gospel of John, verse 23. Again, here's John the Baptist. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. I tell you, to make straight the way of the Lord. Easier said than done. We see the figure of St. John the Baptist. He arrives on the scene in the first week of Advent. And on the last day of the Christmas season, we celebrate the baptism of our Lord in the Jordan. So John the Baptist, he kind of bookends those two seasons. And this passage here, makes straight the way of the Lord, emphasizing this prophetic aspect of John the Baptist. He's known as the last of the old prophets. He bridges the Old Testament and the New Testament. Make straight the way of the Lord. And 
he's encouraging us to walk that walk of a prophet. What is a prophet? Not just one who forecasts a future event, you know, but a man or woman who speaks the truth, who acknowledges God working in their lives and is able to articulate it. At baptism, we're all given this share in Christ's kingship, his royal priesthood, and his prophetic nature. We're all equipped with the virtues of faith, hope, and love at baptism. And we're called to exercise those gifts as a person of the royal priesthood. You know, arms extended, one attaching to our neighbor, one attaching to God the Father. You know, living in Christ as an anointed one. Then with the kingship, having that authority to, to, to live how one should live. You know, abiding in our blessed Lord condemning that which is evil, speaking up for the, uh, the ones who need to be spoken up for. And this blends into that prophetic aspect. To be a little John the Baptist, to be a little John the Baptist, to be a prophet, easier said than done in this day and age. You know, we think about, oh, what's my role? How can I speak the good news? There's so many people who are drifting this way, that way, who don't know Jesus. Maybe in parts of the world in which we live, there's a, 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 a very hostile environment. Not just unpopular being Christian, but dangerous calling oneself a Christian. Yet our Lord tells us, be not afraid. Throughout the scriptures, be not afraid. Speak the truth, live the truth, abiding in him. And the greatest news of all that is not all up to us. That great weight is lifted off our shoulders, knowing that, hey, it's our blessed Lord's work, day in, day out. If we're pursuing what is true, what is good, what is beautiful, what is of the light and not the darkness, then we're collaborating with Jesus. We are collaborators, participators in his good work. And to say, to take a step back, as John the Baptist did and say, hey, let, hey, the light is on Jesus. The spotlight's on him. Let's let him work. Let's let our Lord work here. Not in a standoffish or copping out kind of way. No, with engagement. Here's our Lord. Let's let him work. But let's be present and let's collaborate. Whatever it may be, the seemingly most mundane tasks, duties that we have, taking the kids to school in the morning, going shopping, even brushing your teeth in the morning, uh, visiting a friend or visiting a neighbor that kind of ruffles our feathers. Whatever it is, we say, here, here are things that I can do with Jesus. And I can go through the day knowing that he's with me. Christ, the word made flesh, present in my life. Coming to Mass, receiving him in the Holy Eucharist, keeping up those prayers throughout our day, especially prayers with the family. What a great gift. You know, what we presume was, is just the monotonous day-to-day -day grind, the bumpy road of life. What becomes revealed is that, wow, what a great adventure. This intimacy that we're being drawn into, Jesus, who's with us, not distant, but who's very close. Leading, ev leading us ever closer to himself. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, wherever you live, you know, wherever you find yourself, to draw closer to our Lord in this season, prayerfully. Our Lord who's deeply interested in you personally and in your families. We don't do the Advent season or Christmas season on our own. Our call is not to shine the light on ourselves or on our projects or on the things we got to buy or the ex Christmas experience that we forecast we should have. No, let's shine the light on our Lord, the Lord who really lights our way, abiding in him. God bless you all. God bless your families. And St. John the Baptist, pray for us.
I just want to say congratulations to the team to Shalom World TV. You're doing tremendous work. And I'm going to ask God's blessing for you, for Him to open doors to you and keep you doing your, your good job for new evangelization. So Lord, I want to ask you to bless them and give them your strength and your grace. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.